Really amazingly empowering how simple and clear your vision is, the system is, and implementation of it will be. Yeah. But how did you arrive at that? Because so many people see the same components. They see the, the food scraps. They right. see composting, right? <laughs> and then they see community. And they don't connect them like this. This is yeah. like, oh, that's yeah. how you do it. And it's like, how can we take that kind of, you know, your, w maybe we can pull something from your path and someone who maybe is on a similar path but down a different avenue can then have their own epiphany and create, you know, make something else, you know, and make clean water, totally. you know what I mean? Um, right. And then have it be this community rooted and empowerment structure as well. So how did this all begin? Wow, there's a number of things to comment on there. One is the, the simplicity that you're getting at. So I'm such a fan of uh, simplicity and elegance, not, not in an ostentatious kind of way, but just the, um, you know, like the way an electric car, like when I found out like an electric car had 80% fewer parts than a regular car, I was just struck by the elegance and I was just like, ah, oh, I must have, you know, it was just like, I love things to be as simple as possible. And of course, no simpler. And there's a paraphrase of a quote that I love, which is, um, complexity is not the denial of, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me try again. Simplicity is not the denial of complexity, but the clarification of what is significant. And so anyways, I've been, like you were saying, I've known about composting and urban agriculture and community gardens and the food waste problem and carbon and all this stuff for years, but it really took like a decade of all that swirling in my subconscious and then going out and visibly seeing that people still weren't doing it, you know, that even educated people, people who meditate, people who are really nice people, you know, still, still not doing it, still putting the planet into the garbage, literally. I mean, one day that, you know, that was my epiphany one day. It was like, wow, we're literally, when we put the, the living earth, when we take the food that has fed us and put the remains in the trash can, we're literally treating the planet like garbage. Like I just walked away, like one day, I just had some, I was just struck by that all day long. Wow, we're treating the planet like garbage, you know, and like literally treating the planet like garbage. So it, it just took, it took years and years of saying, how do we refine the message, how do we refine the, what we're asking of people, what we're really asking them to do, instead of this overwhelmingly complicated, massive environmental, um, cacophony of environmental messages that just overwhelm people, how can we just make it so simple that they can take the next step on their journey or open that door? Because as you know, the journey never ends. So, so instead of whacking people over the head with a glimpse of a never-ending journey that's, that's more massive than any of us can imagine, it's just how do you open the door and get them to take that step? And through a series of not just ruminations, but also just providence, you know, just being guided into experiences that I feel really opened, um, opened the door for me and clarified things for me, like knocking on my neighbor's doors and saying, will you help me make soil? You knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, I'm making soil next door, could you help me out? I need your food scraps. That's so different than going over there and saying, hey, you planet wrecking human, I can't believe you're still living so ignorantly, right? So just all these subtle, subtle, subtle shifts in the languaging and what we're expecting of people and what we're offering people to participate in, um, for years has finally resulted in the simplicity of this make soil um, movement, this, this campaign to help people mix oil together. Beautiful. So let's, let's talk about how it works. <laughs> sure. So, you know, there's some thousands or tens of thousands or maybe a hundred thousand people in the world right now, probably making soil actively. Okay. Composting as it is traditionally called. And if we can just get, literally all of those people online and visible on this online map at makesoil.org. So that's step one. And we're literally, our team is like scouring the planet for every single person who knows how to make soil today. 
And then if we can get those people to take the next step, which is very uncommon, again, one of these subtle shifts in, in what we're offering, if we can get those people to go knock on their neighbor's doors or at least open up their compost bin or soil site, as we call it, to the public and just say, hey, could you start bringing your food scraps over to this bin where I'm making soil? That, that's what allows it to start fanning out. That's what, you know, the neighbor who isn't ready to learn how to make compost and never would be is willing to walk over or have their kids bring the food scraps over to your compost bin. And that's it. If people can then see the earth heal itself and regenerate week after week and see their food scraps disappear, it completes a feedback loop in the human mind and it just takes them on that journey. Now that that feedback loop is completed, I, I believe that the complexity of the mind updates in a certain way and that, and that all learning is really, all, all efficient learning is a matter of completing feedback loops. I've just seen, I've seen people have a, an environmental awakening and really just transform the rest of what they do with their lives and how they perceive things just because they watch those food scraps turn into soil firsthand in front of their eyes and participated in it. So it's really, it's really just spreading that experience millions of times and hundreds of millions of times until like billions of people are making soil together like it's no thing like it's just like what we do <laughs> absolutely and what's so cool about this is it truly is a social trophic cascade yeah where suddenly that carbon's taken care of that's great and we're interacting as a community that's an awesome thing that just seems impossible to a lot of people right now right and then suddenly you have all this soil, and then what do you do with really nice soil? Is suddenly make a community garden, which is what That's you it. did. Yeah. <laughs> and it dawn it's like automatically dawns on people. Once they're once they grab a handful of that living soil, they're just like, Wow, I want to grow something. What do you say we grow something together? So you don't have to twist anybody's arm at that point. You just offer this essential first experience and the rest the rest follows. And like you're pointing out, it it really, it really works at so many levels of reality. Like it addresses like a direct environmental intervention into the whole uh, carbon situation, climate situation. It's, an, it's one of the most potent community building things you can do. Like forget the pizza party, you know, like get people together to make soil and those become lasting relationships around something really beautiful. The way it affects the mind, we touch that living soil and it updates it. it um, very healing for the mind. You know, people feel alone and depressed these days and all that kind of thing. You're touching living soil and it's clear that you're not alone, that, the, that you're inside of a living system. Um, and then what it causes with food resilience and all the gardens start popping up. You know, if, if all that food waste, instead of leaving cities as garbage, is coming into cities and turning into soil and coming to cities and turning into soil, that's tons and tons of healthy living soil being generated inside of cities. And that, that's another trophic cascade right there in the resilience of the food system. So it just like boggles my mind how many levels of reality making soil together has a positive influence on. And once I began to realize that, I was just like, okay, I'm all in on people making soil together. I found the thing that I can get behind 100% and recommend to anybody of any background, you know, any political division, any, you know, anything. Like this is the thing, this is the thing that no, that, there's just no downside to. And that's wonderful to just like have finally found that thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, growing up, we threw everything away and I, I, it never occurred to me that it turns into soil. It never occurred to me as a child. And I you know, was in honors biology and all that, exactly. that stuff. And it's like, I was completely disconnected. And I feel like if we can just connect people to the truth, and how easy it is, how natural it is. Then they start realizing, they're like, wait, the food is the soil, the food is me, the That's soil it. is me. And it's like that whole self-evident like realization. That's right. That, you know what I mean? That, that with the garden, we got the soil. It's like, wait a second, I am the soil. And it's like, we don't need to force feed it. We don't need to, you know, go, you know, we don't need to go into the zealous region. And that's what's so amazing about your website. You show up and it's like, are you a soil maker? Or are you contributing to the soil making? And you're like, yeah. okay, yeah. wow. It really yeah. is that, that, that easy. 
I think it says above it, like every, like everyone can participate in making soil together. Like we mean it, like which one of these are you? You know, are you a person who consumes food and wants a better place to put it? Or are you a person who wants to actually shepherd it all the way back to soil? Which one are you? Uh, and, and setting up those conditions where reality just can reveal itself to a person, right? So where the planet can sort of introduce itself. Hi, I'm the living planet that you're inside of and riding on top of. So think of all the, I know you've done a lot with uh, schools and education, and I've spoken at a few schools where, you know, it was rough. Like a lot of the kids were pre-diabetic and their parents were diabetic and the school was maybe not even recycling at the time, this was years ago. Certainly had never heard of soil or composting or that food scraps could turn into soil. And I asked them what they were learning and they were, they were studying like geothermal energy out of textbooks or something, right? And it's just like, that's just not relevant to their situation. And if you could have just taken all those kids outside and said, look, we're gonna build a bin together and then all the food from the cafeteria is gonna turn into this jet black stuff that gives life to the planet, man, they, they would have been really more engaged and gotten a lot more out of it. So I really, I'd love your help. Let's team up and seeing if we can get making soil together to be like an essential part of every earth science curriculum worldwide. I don't see why that can't happen. I don't see why your program can't be part of schools everywhere fundamentally. And if, if anything, like a sign up node. So like, like the kids are all taking home the make soil worksheet and then signing up the families to it. Exactly. We're just sort of like stimulating the ecosystem and, and really trying to live by that principle of decentralization uh, because that's the only way that you'll ultimately end up with. It's your only chance of having hundreds of millions and billions of people doing this together. You have to offer just the right amount of support and structure and enough freedom for people to make it their own in their own niches. Um, yeah, and, the, and you know, the environmental message today is so overwhelming, so it's nice that we're beginning to educate uh, children about the situation, but the, the action step, the call to action, you'll notice at the end of every environmental documentary or, or whatever, the call to actions always seem rather impotent and like token activities compared to like the horrors that we've just seen on the documentaries. And if we're not getting that empowering, here's what you can actually do today that actually makes a difference, then it, we just start to suppress that and feel fear and guilt and, and all these kind of things that um, ultimately aren't helpful. So this making soil together thing isn't just some like token thing to make us feel good while the ship sinks. It is one of the gateway experiences that actually has a significant impact that can scale that can spread and that has that trophic cascade that you're talking about that kicks off so many other regenerative processes and regenerative thought processes in people's minds that really could, could turn the situation around. They recently released this book called The Five Steps and the first step is to build soil because oh, not only is it the easiest step that we can all take and the most empowering like where like you, it's like almost instantaneous. It's almost, it's not instantaneous, but it's almost instantaneous how fast the results are. It's like, holy yeah. cow, I did this. Yeah. But everything else is based off of it. The restoration of the forests, the restoration of the oceans actually is based on, you know, restoring yeah. our soils. Yeah. And our watersheds, same yeah. exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, if we don't have, and then the comprehension side, it all starts with the fact that we are soil, that the gut microbes are cousins to the, yeah. the, to the soil yeah. microbes. Yeah. And once we start seeing this, this inner being, yeah. which is our reality, you know, going yeah. back to Charles Eisenstein, yeah. we, it, it just, it just start all the, all the things that yeah. we, the stories we've been given start paling and we start being able to analyze them instead of being like this and we can't see anything else, we're able to look at them and we're like, oh, man, is this true? Mm -hmm. And we're able to like make real decisions. And so I don't know of any other program that has streamlined th this step yeah. like your program. 
I don't know of any other program that has made it so crystal clear, so easy. Um, have you tried working with college campuses? Uh, not formally yet. We have mm. uh, some students involved. You know, the platform's only been uh, in development for about 10 months now. So we're, um, we're, still, we're still at the point where we've been kind of approaching uh, soil makers and potential soil makers one-on-one -on -one and sitting them down and, and doing workshops in their backyard just to make sure, as streamlined as it looks to you, Mm -hmm. We want it to be perfect so that from 8 to 80, everybody can use it, right? So we're still kind of finessing it, but... Um, Have you thought about having, including, um, like, so, like compost training materials for... Yeah, for those are kind of... So we've, we've been shooting a lot of video and all that kind of stuff so that somebody... Because we'll quite often meet people, they'll hear me give a talk or I'll just have a conversation with them, and they're going from zero to 60 they get it suddenly. They're suddenly like, oh, wow, all this food I've been putting in the garbage doesn't belong there. They just, they know they want to participate and they don't know anything else. And so ultimately makesoil.org will be a place where you can go, you can start at zero, just with that intention to start living more harmoniously or to start making soil or whatever. It will, it will ultimately um, not be a one-stop place, but a good starting place. There, of course, as people continue their journey, they'll want to get into more details and, and all the materials that you offer and stuff like that. But it, it will be a place where people knowing nothing can go and get started so that that very day, their food no longer goes in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's like a one-start place, you know what one I mean? One-start, I like you it. Get you started, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just imagine uh, in the schools, um, when, when children start coming home and saying to their parents, you know, mommy, that, those, uh, carrot tops, they don't belong in the garbage. That's the planet. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, it's like, what did you say? You know, and when they start coming home and saying, uh, you know what, I know what I want to be now. And well, what's that? What's that, Johnny? You know, I want to be a soil maker. You know, it's like, that's what we're talking about. That's the kind of cultural shift that is possible here um, with a lot of the subtle things we're doing, like, like promoting that soil maker role as an identity for people to step into. So again, going from things like, hey, you should be composting and that doesn't belong in the trash to, hey, have you ever thought of being a soil maker? You know, it's like, it's, 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 it's a lot of subtleties like that that are being brought together on the platform that make it look so, so simple and elegant, but it's, it, there are, there's like a hundred small intentional changes that have not really been tried before all together in one package. What have you seen in your own community in Raleigh? Uh, what kind of stories have emerged from your own compost? So I'm not, I'm not based there anymore, but that's where the, the original transformative experience happens of building that compost bin, knowing nothing about soil making myself, having literally just found out on the internet or something that uh, if I was going to start growing some food as I intended, then I ought to be making compost. I'm literally like, remind me what that is again? You know, that I was starting there like everybody else at some point. And then uh, building the bin and tossing my food scraps in there from a week and just not having, you know, it didn't cover the bottom of the bin. And so I thought, wow, I need more food scraps. I wasn't, you know, like many people, I wasn't setting out to like start some movement or do some significant spiritual act in my community. I just took the next step, which is often how it is. And you look back and see the breadcrumbs, but knocked on my neighbor's doors, asked them if they would help me make soil by saving their food scraps and bringing them to this bin. Within a few weeks, over a dozen people were doing that. And the, so it was, the response was really un, unexpected and also the consistency was unexpected. So once people began doing that, it just felt so much better than putting food in the garbage, putting the plant in the garbage, that people stuck to it. And then to my surprise, they became um, rather zealous about the whole issue f from having spent their whole lives, you know, putting the food in the garbage they were now saying i you know my my parents house like i built i'm gonna go build them a compost bin next weekend because their food is going in the garbage or people i would uh be out there at the bin and people would come by with like their lunch bag from work and they're like i save all my food scraps at work every day and bring them home you know and i 
I'd be like, hey, you could set out a little container by the coffee machine with a sticker on it that says, you know, a note card that says, hey, when you're changing out the coffee filter and making coffee, put it in here and I'll take it home to the compost. Just these little things, right? And then though every person who's coming up to that coffee machine is like, oh, you're gonna do what with it, right? That's how it spreads. And and even a couple of the uh, the neighbors uh, who began to learn to make soil there, like went on to start like a like a composting pickup service because the city didn't have a municipal service, and that they're still running that today. So I watched people change their immediate behavior at home and also like their careers and what they did with their lives. And to that point, universities, I watched university students um, then petition the student government to change the cafeteria processing of the food waste. So again, the ripple effect was just unexpected, unprecedented. And despite having done a lot of stuff in entrepreneurship and urban agriculture, it was really, asking my neighbors to make soil with me was really the simplest thing I ever did that had the biggest positive transformative ripple effect. And I feel very strongly that it, when we partner with natural processes, we have that catalyst you know, effect in our, in, in our lives and in our communities. Um, I think if you had you know, gone to your neighbors with Lulabro or something like that, right. it would have you know, not had that unifying effect. And it's, That's right. and, it, and, it's, and it's that kind of authenticity that this is really offering and it may it yeah. and it may not make sense to people until they really do That's it. it it's Matt it is it is the when people make soil together for the first time it's usually the first regenerative earth process they've ever witnessed let alone participated in let alone facilitated wow. so that's why this is so trans I get chills when I think of it that's why this is so transformative. Because remember, I had this experience with my neighbors and then spent 10 years trying to figure out why the heck it was so powerful. Like, I still didn't understand why it's such a simple thing. And it's just like you're saying. And one of the reasons was that it was the first time in their life that their human existence had been brought into harmony with a regenerative process of the planet. And that's just powerful because now you're really like living into the ecosystem, you know, and, and stepping into... I don't know, a higher vibration role in the ecosystem <laughs> or something. But it's, it's, and so instead of going around and saying all that wacky stuff to people, I mostly just say, hey, can you help me make soil? Because all that will become self-evident. But if you want to really riff on the, the metaphysics behind it, that's, that's part of it. One thing I say is that like people, whether it's they're talking about Bitcoin and decentralization or all these kind of trends, I'll, uh, I'll sometimes say that, um, well, yeah, the reason that's so powerful is because it, coheres with the pattern of, of ecosystems more than this other thing and more than the previous way we were doing things. And reality is an ecosystem. They, you know, our, this earth and, and the reality as far as we can see it is an ecosystem. And so anything that doesn't um, cohere with the pattern of an ecosystem is in some sense at war with reality. And so the moment we do anything in our lives to bring our reality, our relationships, our relationship with the planet, our relationship with our food, or, you know, into something that more matches the functional pattern of an ecosystem, it just feels right. Yeah. Mm. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so like, we could go around trying to say that all to people, which would be really tough. But thankfully, all we have to say is become a soil maker or find one near you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we have to say. <laughs> and that's the, that's the true power of what you're offering, I believe, is that it is a seed. And it's a seed that everyone goes, oh, I want to plant that. And then it has this just a, ability to just take us so far. Um, and, you know, it's funny. When you, I mean, when you said that vibration thing, I always, when, I, when everyone says those kinds of things, I always try to root it in reality. And I'm like, well, the creative process is the, actual like most enjoyable thing for humans like artists moms having babies we love babies we love baby animals we love creation and soil is the creation that leads to all creation um it's yeah and so it has that deeper meaning within it it's so wild man yeah. um and 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 
yeah, we don't have things like that in our society too. To, right. they, they can't compete with what you have to offer. So I want all of our listeners, all of our viewers, all my subscribers, and I'm going to be sending this out on my mailing list for sure. It's a global movement. So, yeah. Uh, people will say funny things like, uh, well, when will you, you know, when will you come to New Hampshire? You know, when, when will Make Soil launch there? And I'm like, when will you start making soil and invite your neighbors to make soil with you? Because then you just put yourself on the map and now it's in New Hampshire. You know, it's just, it's, that's the decentralized approach. So this is, this is truly a call to action for every person who knows how to make soil or is willing to learn to start today or as soon as possible, and then to invite their neighbors to join them as soon as possible. And the point of the online platform in part is to help uh, make sure those relationships and that act of making soil together in neighborhoods goes smoothly. So you don't, you don't have to, when you use the platform, you don't, it helps regulate how many people you're making soil with. So, and, and so you don't have to worry about like 100 neighbors all bringing, you know, dumping their food in your yard suddenly. Like it doesn't, um, that's not going to happen to anybody. So it really helps you, um, show people what you accept and don't accept and lets you make requests for what you need. Like, okay, we have lots of food scraps now, but we need more leaves. You know, do any of you have a bunch of leaves in your yard that, that you don't know what to do with? So just please today go there, sign up, become a soil maker, start a soil site, um, or just become a soil supporter even. And if there's nobody near you making soil, our team will go to work behind the scenes finding a soil maker in that town, finding a community garden, calling them up, literally calling them up if we have to and saying, could you become a soil maker? We have soil supporters near you who want to be dropping off their food scraps. We're, we're, we're willing to do that work behind the scenes uh, and to keep perfecting the platform until literally billions of us are doing this together. So this is just the very beginning, but you can start today, absolutely. Awesome, and that is makesoil.org backslash sign up. So just go right there and just sign up. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add? Yeah. Um, you know, this is a, this is a nonprofit and uh, I've done a lot of for-profits as well and startups and things like that. And the reason we did it as a nonprofit was just because this is, this is too important to ever fall prey to um, people fighting over shares or some kind of acquisition by some mega company or something like that. So I want, I just want folks to know that that's where the intention is coming from. And, uh, and, uh, and, and therefore we also could use a lot of support and volunteers and things like that. So um, if you're a volunteer software developer, web developer who could join our team and just knock out a few tickets here and there, we have like a hundred features that we want to and fixes and improvements that we want to implement right now that we know will help make the whole um, process smoother for everyone and will help more people make soil together, things that have never been tried in this, in this industry before. Um, also, if any cities out there like really want to make a go of it and, and want to catalyze their community, and um, then they can, they can request for me to come visit. You know, people can um, put me and a teammate up and, uh, and host us for a, for a week or so, then we can really go to town uh, doing workshops and speaking and activating soil makers in the community. And then you get this real kind of critical mass in the community. For example, I, I, um, here in St. Petersburg, where we're kind of, we're activating right now, um, somebody uh, was asking what one of our challenges are. And we said, well, a really good, attractive um, compost bin that people would be proud to have in their front yard uh, that's pest proof, that, that is designed well, that would give them a really good chance of making soil in, a, in an effective uh, way. And I have the design for it in, in a prototype. I said, but we need, people, we need more of those bins here. So they introduced us to a local woodworker, like a, like a master cabinet maker. And I sat down with the guy and that guy I'd say is now transitioning to being a master compost bin maker and these are like the most beautiful compost bins I, like i've ever seen so that the world has ever seen right and and so that's how it works it's like this is we're bringing other people in from other walks of life 
people like carpenters and woodworkers and just hobbyists and people with maker spaces and and we're saying hey the world um, is going to need many thousands of new compost bins to make soil together and so we're bringing those people to the table who they didn't know about the whole situation they didn't know how they could participate and it's it's really invigorating for them think of all the wood shops in schools and high schools around the world where students are making like a coat hanger or something i don't know and they could be making compost bins for their community they could be making them for the science class for their school so Let's get thousands of, and we also have this fun thing we do where we create uh, job titles that haven't really existed before or, how, or we promote them, uh, like the soil maker and now the bin maker. So, you know, like this guy in town, uh, his name is James. He's like, he's like James, the bin maker. Like it's, it's, a, it's an identity shift, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that can happen over and over and over again until the whole world is making soil together. Yeah, I keep saying that, you know, our current economy has regenerative twins and then some. There's so many more roles in that regenerative world. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And even though we're a nonprofit, we will at some point give people on the platform the opportunity to have some kind of economic exchange going on. So, you know, we have an economy that's like 99.9% .9 antithetical to the survival of the biosphere right now and we have to shift that to a regenerative economy somehow and and i i believe that the soil maker will be the first regenerative job to go mainstream because that barrier to entry is actually so low um and because the value offered is so high so we have a whole plan in place to see that the people can begin to make a livelihood from being a soil maker in this cottage industry decentralized fashion. Wow. So our last, um, uh, the last interview on here was with rain cube and what they're doing is every drop they get into these rain cubes are actually digitally tracked mm -hmm. and they turn them into rain coins. Yep. And so it becomes this digital currency that everyone in the community is constantly aware of. And so you invest it in your site or you exchange it with others, but it's, it's considered a natural currency. Yep. And so there might be a pathway there that, that's similar. Yeah, an asset backed token and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and even we will probably go the crypto and token route at some point when it makes sense, if it makes sense. But even more simply, we know that uh, there are people out there who would happily give their neighbor, their, their neighborhood soil maker 10, 20 or 30 bucks a month just for receiving their food scraps and helping their family live in harmony with the planet, helping create a place where their kids can come over and witness that kind of thing happening. We know that's possible and just nobody's made the ask, nobody's set up the relationship. So we're at the beginning stages of doing that. That's so beautiful. It's going to be absolutely incredible and transformative for communities all over the world. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Matt. Uh, you're very <laughs> welcome and for doing what you're doing and helping spread the word. You know, right now, like kids come summertime, like they maybe get a job or something and they like mow some lawns or they end up folding jeans at the mall or, you know, serving frozen yogurt or something. Like when those kids start becoming soil makers instead during that time uh, them having that regenerative job that most of their parents never had the the privilege of getting to experience it changes the way they think it changes the jobs that they'll take on in the future it's it's really we need that generation to think of the other thousand regenerative jobs that we need and to make them into real jobs for people. And the bottleneck right now is that nobody ever sees a single regenerative job to kind of prime the pump of the mind. And so that's, that's just a really um, beautiful thing I, I dream of is kids um, becoming soil makers, just in part-time spare time in their holidays and on, in summer. Um, but I know the transformative ripple effect it'll have on all their lives and they will, they will help us create the regenerative economy that we need. They'll be able to see it. They'll be able to see it in their mind's eye. That is my dream and my, my hope too, that 
the next generation, if we give them the tools, we give them the pieces that they will combine them into something that is beyond our ability to see. Yeah, yeah. Another, another ask is uh, just volunteers of all kinds, especially um, not just software developers, but, but also outreach volunteers. Like I said, if we see on a map that there's uh, three soil supporters or, or neighbors who want to start um, taking their scraps somewhere, uh, who don't have a soil maker near them, then we do want to go to work in that community remotely, calling, dialing, searching until we find somebody in that town who knows how to make soil near those people and to, and to bring them online as a soil maker. So you can imagine this whole kind of behind the scenes network of people um, using the platform to match people into these, into the soil making relationships. So we have we have no end of volunteer outreach work that has a super high impact that transforms people's lives the moment they are matched with that soil maker, the moment that soil maker begins receiving scraps from a neighbor. So, so anybody out there who's looking for something to do of impact and has a few hours a week to, to spend doing that, um, I can promise it's a, it's a good and meaningful time and, and has a lot of impact. Beautiful and as well as speaking gigs and all that stuff. So I, I, do, enjoy, I do enjoy doing the, the talks and public speaking. And I think it's especially important uh, for people to see um, like somebody with my background as like a computer science guy in college and then a tech entrepreneur to be like so into soil for some inexplicable reason, right? Because then they're just kind of like, you know, they might expect it from some sort of like, um, somebody who obviously looks like an environmentalist or something like that, or, you know, or some wandering kind of nomad, but which, which I am now, but to see some, to see, to see increasingly there's people on the team who on our make soil team, who, you know, used to work in like mergers and acquisitions at large, at large banks in the world. And, and so just, it's really, it's really important to begin getting out there in front of people and saying, I used to do this, I had some success at that, I could be doing all kinds of things, and I'm all in on making soil with you. And then they're just kind of like, why, you know? And that's, so, so put me out there as much as you possibly can, and I, and I love to tell that, that story to people wherever I can. Yeah, start the transformation in their own lives. Yeah, and then breaking down those barriers of the boxes we put ourselves in, right? Like. I mean, you, you had to stop identifying as purely a musician at some point to really open yourself to the work you're doing now. And there's like, thankfully I didn't identify as a techie so much that I couldn't befriend nature, right? And, um, or that uh, I let the, the business acumen or entrepreneurial part of myself, uh, that I didn't like shame that into some hole to, to save the planet. In, and it's really about bringing all those intelligences together, harmonizing them, integrating them, kind of like the work we, would, we do internally as well. But when we can reconcile technology and business with ecosystem consciousness and the flourishing of the biosphere to where, to where technology and the economy and business all have that real earth empathy, then we'll start seeing solutions that last and that work for everyone. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Mm. It is, I, I see it as the linchpin. I, I have not seen anything that even comes close to awesome. what you are doing. So awesome. I'm going to sign up. I hope that every single person who watches this, sees this, hears this, signs up, and then yep. shares it with a friend. Yeah, thank you, Matt. And it's, and, and just to finally say, like, it's, we're not saying that all the other things out there don't matter, that whether you're into cleaning up plastic in the ocean or, you know, getting toxins out of the water or whatever, like all that stuff matters. But as you're saying with the linchpin, if you can get your neighbors making soil with you, then we will find millions and millions more people caring about all these other issues. Because right now there aren't enough people involved in caring about those issues. So this is just the gateway that gets whatever your project is, whatever your planet saving passion is, whether it's water, whether it's biodiversity, what, whatever, this is the gateway that brings the mainstream into supporting all these causes that we all care about. So it's not to, to 
diminish any of the other ones. It's just to get our, our order of operations set so that we can really bring the mainstream to the table. Because it, otherwise it doesn't work out. If we get a few hundred million people aware of the planetary situation and six and a half billion that aren't, it still doesn't work out. So we can't have that kind of elitism. It's, it's, we need to all be, um, we need to be bringing the mainstream to the table. We need to have a message and an activity that absolutely anyone can participate in regardless of their background or political division. People, and, and it's like you're saying, I'm literally, people are coming to me with all kinds of problems and challenges and I'm saying, have you tried making soil? You know, people are like, well, the politicians in my city don't get it. No, blah, blah, blah. It's like, are you neighbors with any of them? Do you know their neighbors? Have you invited them to make soil with you? Literally, like anything you're thinking of right now, any problem you're facing, any, any issue you're having, make soil with the people involved. It spreads, that, it spreads that earth empathy among everybody. And then whatever issue you're trying to talk about, you'll be more on the same page. Beautiful.